What's up guys? Today I want to talk about if social media traffic can help your business. And I'm going to go through a bunch of tips and a bunch of stuff that we've discovered to tell you exactly if it's going to help you extend your business reach, get more sales, get more conversions, get all that fun stuff that you're looking for. Let's go. Now, before I get started, everybody has seen all of those Facebook ads. They've seen everything, people getting rich online, people getting rich on social media, selling like crazy, all of that other stuff. And it's all garbage. No, just kidding. It's not. There is a lot of good stuff out there, but do not fall into the trap that social media is the be all end all. Is social media going to help your business? The short answer is absolutely yes. But the long answer is it's going to take a lot of work and it's going to take you time. Let's discuss. So now just as a little disclaimer, we have been running Facebook ads, social media ads for a really long time now across industries and we've seen what works and what doesn't. And one thing that I'll say before I get started, before all of you are commenting saying that I don't know what I'm talking about, remember one thing, Facebook ads specifically, social media ads work really, really, really well with compulse buys. So what I usually say for that as a rule of thumb is any product that's $100 and under, that's a compulsive buy that you can just see buy one or two times after getting remarketed to a product, it works really well. But if we look at products that get above that, two, three hundred dollars, one thousand, ten thousand, a hundred thousand real estate property, it starts to get smaller and smaller conversion numbers. The amount of dollars needed to create that conversion is a little bit higher. That's the scene across all ad platforms. However, with social media specifically, that's where we start to get into platforms that become branding platforms rather than pure conversion platforms. So I know at this point in time, some of you guys are saying, Jared then how is social media gonna help my business? Let's get right into it. Let's get into tip number one. Social media helps your business by validating your product or service. What do I mean by that? Well, have you ever seen a product or a service or been looking up somebody on social media and they only have 50 likes on their page? By investing in social media, by building content, by getting out to an organic audience, by doing it right and creating engagement, you're able to validate your product it goes back to a little bit of psychology and groupthink where if more people like that product, then some other people are going to feel like they're missing out, like there's something there. So validate your brand. Let's just say you're a car dealership. Yes, your product, cars, are more than $100. It's not a compulsive buy. However, you can still generate some conversions through Facebook ads. At the same time, you build your brand equity. You build up your audience. You get reviews. You talk about different tips. You offer value to your audience and the people that have come to your dealership before. What that's going to do is people are going to begin to trust you. It's going to keep your dealership top of mind for when that person's ready to buy their next vehicle. Now that's just... Kevin. Now that's just one example of how you can validate, but validation works for every single business, which takes me to tip number two. How do you validate? How do you create that value? Build subconscious touch points. You guys may have heard in one of my other videos, I'll try to put a link above and below for which ones I talked about the subconscious inbound cycle. But for any business, the goal on social media is to build a brand and to validate. And to do that, you have to create a whole bunch of subconscious touch points until you get to the inbound one, which is that ad, which is that call to action, that conversion item. All of the other subconscious touch points are trying to build value. You're trying to tell stories in your content. You're trying to engage emotion. You're trying to solve problems with whatever your product or service does. Show how it solves a problem. Those items equal value. And that value is what's going to build your audience in the beginning of your platform. Together, that's going to start to develop traffic. And even though some of that traffic's not going to convert right away, I'm going to talk about why it is so important to get that traffic from social media right here in this next tip. Tip number three, the most important thing in this entire episode, which a lot of marketers do wrong and some people don't put enough attention into, social media traffic builds your audience. I'm going to say it one more time. Social media traffic builds your audience. 
Now that's not just the audience on the social media page. It's also the traffic that goes through your ads to your website. As soon as they get to your website and you capture them within your remarketing audiences, you can now serve ads to those people for a certain amount of time, depending on what your product or niche is. The reason this is so important is it actually lowers your overall conversion cost over time. By building an audience of people that are already interested in your product through social media, you're able to now remarket to them many, many times until they're ready to buy. Remember the subconscious inbound cycle. Most people don't buy until they see your product 10, 12 times. And that includes everything. That includes you running Facebook ads, doing Google ads, them seeing you on Google Maps, them driving by your location, somebody talking to them about your product or service, a testimonial a review. All of those items are these subconscious touch points that lead to your inbound. When you're able to serve the ads to an audience that you know is interested in your product, you're able to effectively capitalize on a digital marketing presence. That is why social media, in a nutshell, is so important for your business. But building an audience takes time. It takes effort. You have to get multiple people to go to your website. Try to get up to 10,000 people from social media to your website. Get that traffic. Build the audience. At that point in time, you know that audience is going to love your product or your service. And the cost of ads that you're going to run down the road for your entire digital marketing presence is going to come down which is what we're all looking for, for those better ROI numbers. So tip number four then, to get there. How do you get there? It takes work. It takes effort. You have to scale your content. You have to build up a lot of value. You have to build up your audience. You gotta do all of these things right before some of those conversions are gonna start to come through through social media. So don't take shortcuts. Stick the course. Once you commit to it, keep doing it over a long period of time. And I'm talking two, three, five years. That audience that you're going to build is going to start to walk in. If I use the car dealership example again, they're going to walk into your car dealership. They're going to say they saw that cool piece of content that you put out about how to change your wiper blades and they didn't want to change their wiper blades. So they came in the door and wanted you to do it for them. Okay, bad example. But the point of the matter is they're going to notice your brand is going to stay top of mind and brand is everything. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is I want to talk about a scale. So what we have found in our experience is, of course, most businesses want those conversions from day one. There's a correlation between how fast you're able to turn those social media audience members and the people you're serving your content in into customers based on the price of your product. And this is roughly the same as real life. So for example, on the left axis, if I put cost of product, and right at the bottom, I'm gonna put that $100 mark. Anything under that I say is a compulsive buy. And then on the bottom, I'm gonna say years, or let's just put time. And let's go one, two, three, four, five. Not exact, but I'm gonna show you the curve. It's roughly straight. At the top of my chart here, I am just gonna put $25,000, which may be the price of a car. Now, now, just like in real life, if we look at this, let's say that I was going door to door to mow lawns and I was charging $40 to mow a lawn. That's a compulsive buy. It takes a very short amount of time to build that relationship in order to convince someone at the door to buy my product or service. The higher the value of the product, let's say, let's say I was working for a telecommunication company and I was trying to sell an iPhone, roughly $1,000. It's going to take more time for my company to be able to sell that $1,000 iPhone because I'm going to have to put in the effort to build the relationship. The same thing happens on social media. Just remember that. It's not going to happen overnight and you're putting in the effort in order to reap the benefits of brand all that brand equity down the road, once you built your audience, once you can run better ads, once you are able to find the exact customer you're looking for. Actually, that's a good idea for another video. The exact customer you're looking for, how to build your customer avatars. I'm gonna write that one down. That's it for this episode, guys. I hope that provided you guys with some value. I was trying this episode to kind of ramble a little bit, go off the dome, give a couple more examples, and I want to hear from you guys. If you liked it or if you didn't, put it in the comments below. Hit like or hit dislike. I will not hold it against you. At the end of the day, I'm just trying to get you guys more value, video after video after video, as I try to put out more of these digital marketing and content making tips. That's it for this episode, guys. I hope to see you guys 
in the next one.